All right, so let's try a series solution approach to solving y prime plus 2xy equals 0. And what the heck, I'll, let's give an initial condition to make our lives easier. Say y of 0 is 1. OK, so how does a series approach work? Do a sum of both sides. Say what? Yeah, so yeah, this essentially works the same way that, well, variation of parameters does, right? Guess that it has a Taylor series and try to force it. So guess this. All right, so I'm going to guess y is the sum from n is 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. Well, if supposedly this works, this will work for everything, then why do you have to assume there's a Taylor form or a <coughs> series for it? Yeah, so this will get you an approximation to everything. Not everything is approximatable. <coughs> okay. In other words, the answer you get might just be an approximation and not actually equal the solution. Does that kind of make sense? So, yeah, it is actually a stretch for me to say, this thing has a Taylor polynomial, because they don't all. Any solution to this differential equation is going to have a Taylor polynomial, because this thing's pretty chill. The, the little theorem in your book says that as long as the coefficients of the derivatives are polynomials, and as long as you're not trying to build this around the first one is zero, you'll be able to find a Taylor, ser a Taylor series solution. And that's, that's true in kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's more fundamentally true than it seems like it is. You could do that with not polynomials as long as they were kind of sufficiently nice functions. So you could really get away with a lot here. But there are, a, there are some pathological examples of functions so I'm supposing that I have some Taylor series, and then I <coughs> differentiate said Taylor series. So I get y prime is the sum from n is 0 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1. And then you may as well drop the 0 out of this, start things at n is 1. All with me on that? Okay. Oh, because the zero term is a zero. Yeah, the zero term is zero, but it's got a one over x in it. I don't really want to mess around with that thing. Right. Pitch it. So take these two guys and shove them in there. Right? So you take those, you shove them in here, you get that you have. The sum from n is 1 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1 plus the sum from n is 0 to infinity. Yeah, so I'm sucking the, oh, let me not do that. So, so plus 2x, the sum from n is 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. Yeah, and, and this just, should. That just becomes 2a sub n uh, times x to the n plus 1. Yeah. So this should be equal to 0, right? And should really be identically 0. Right? Because I want this to be true for all the x's. So keeping that identically in there is probably a good idea. Right? So you don't accidentally start solving for x's. So then I can bring the 2 and the x, which are constant with respect to this summation, right, into there. So I've got the sum from n is 1 to infinity, n a n x to the n minus 1, plus the sum from n is 0 to infinity of 2 a n x to the n plus 1. And this is supposed to be identically 0. Okay, then what? 
combine first something else. So careful. Don't shove together until you've re-indexed so the powers match. So you do want to do that re-index step first. So I'm going to change one of them to something else. Which one do you want to change? Okay, and I'm going to do this. The, I'm going to do this the kind of cutesy way. I'm going to change the ends to Ks first. I'm going to go through the first one and change it to Ks. Thank you. So make sure you get them all. And then what do I need to do? First sum. I want to make a match, right? Okay, so maybe there's some ellipses in order. K minus one is one plus one. N plus two. Or you could do K minus one on this one and N plus one. Okay, so. I'm here where I've re-indexed one with k's, and then I'm kind of debating amongst myself, ourselves, whether I bust this out to changing this one, or this one, or both, or, yeah. Could we equate the exponents, and then... Yeah, basically you want the exponents to be the same, right? So you can either push this one to n plus one, or you could... <coughs> Pull this one back to the middle and push this one forward a little bit. Like, I don't care. Pick something. Um, so, so what was it? I guess I'm going to do just change this one. Or do you want to? Oh, what the hell? Let's change them both. It'll be more fun. No, it's a terrible idea. Okay, so let's let n be k. I don't know. I want that to turn into an n plus one, right? You guys see that? So really, I want to let n plus one equal k minus one, right? So I think that says n is k minus two. Yes. Good eyeball on whoever that one. So do that. So. I've got my sum, which is going to start from oh, okay. when k is 1. It's going to be n is negative 1. n is negative 1. That feels really weird. When k is infinity, n is also infinity. When k then is n plus two. plus 2, and then you've got a sub n plus 2, and you've got x to the n plus 1, and then you've got plus the sum from n is 0 to infinity, of 2an x to the n plus 1. And this is supposed to be identically to us still. And now it feels like something weird happened. So this isn't like the other one, right? So what happened that was weird? Is it because we is it because we initially changed the one to infinity on the two sum? No, it's can you add and subtract? If I if this had been zero, this would be even worse, right? It'd be negative two instead of negative one. Yeah, something's weird. So you make it zero and then add the minus one, maybe? Totally. Yeah, to stick these together, they need to be the same sums, right? Yeah. So this one has an extra one. Yeah. So just pop it off, man. Like, think about this thing. 
instead of as the sum starting at minus 1, like pop the minus 1 term off, right? And then add the sum from n is 0 to infinity of whatever there. You guys see that? So there's, a, there's two tricks here. There's the re-index trick, which is this thing. And then there's this pop off a term or two, maybe 10. Like, but pop off a couple terms and pull them out. Did we do something similar the other day with the, the step series? The step function? Yeah, we did something kind of similar the other day where we broke an integral this way. Yeah. Which is a like super usual calc 2 trick. This is a similar flavor of calc 2, calc 2 trick, but a little bit <coughs> maybe not covered in calc 2. So if I pop the n is minus 1 term off, what is that thing? When n is minus 1, what do you got there? So, one, a 1, x to the 0. So that's 1 a 1, right? Like that's it. And then there's plus the sum from n is 0 to infinity of your n plus 2 times a n plus 2 times x to the n plus 1 plus the sum, oh, I guess I don't really need that sum now, right? This is the same thing. So I got plus 2an x to the n plus 1. And this is supposed to be identically 0. So factor of the x plus 1. Totally. So you got a1 plus the sum from n is 0 to infinity of n plus 2 times a n plus 2 plus 2 a n all times x to the n plus 1 is supposed to be identically 0. Okay, so now yeah, so now you really should start your series, right? So, okay, if I plug in n is, so I got my a1, right? Which might be in the wrong spot. I'm not sure where that goes in my series. It might go with something else further along. So resist the urge to set that equal to zero immediately. And then you got plus, when I plug in n is zero, what do I get out of that stuff? 2an. 2a. Oh, A2, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2A2 plus 2A0. 2A0 x. Is with me? That's the n is 0 term. Then you need a plus. This should be my n is 1 term, right? So I get 3a3 plus 2a1 x squared. And then you snag that a1 from the front. This guy doesn't have any x's though. Oh, right. You guys see that? This dude doesn't have any x's? Yes. Uh, weird. Anyway, that was the n is 1 term. And then there should be a plus 4a4 plus 2a2. 4a4 plus 2a2 x cubed. times x cubed. Uh, and it should be noted that I'm not a huge fan of writing out all these terms, but you do need some of them. Like to see a pattern, you need at least three or four. So build a few at least and leave some space to build some more if you have to. So the n is 3 term. I should get 5a5 plus 2a3 x to the 4th. 
So that's my n is 3 term. And now I think I got the pattern, right? So the next one's going to be 6a6 plus 2a4 x to the fifth. And then the next one's going to be 7a to the seventh plus 2a to the a5. I said that. I said this one, Berkey. Sorry. That's a7, not a to the seven. And then you got x to the sixth, and kind of so on, right? Okay, so now if I make those relationships, because this is supposed to equal 0 plus 0x zero plus, mm -hmm. right? And I know that a long time ago I had an initial condition. Uh, y of 0 is? Which was that y of 0 is 1. So that told me about a0, right? <laughs> so remembering to way back in the day, 1 was y of 0, and y of 0 is a0. Get rid of that. And then out of these, let's see, a1 has to be 0. zero. So if that's 0, Zero. This one's zero. Well, don't they all equal to zero anyway? All the odd ones. Wait, that's that's odd. Odd. that one wasn't odd. <laughs> Oops, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Screwed me up. <laughs> so you said, aren't they all zero anyways, right? Yeah. Yeah. Each of these things is zero, but because a one itself is zero, and 3a3 has to equal minus 2a1, the then a3 zero. is also 0. Uh, you guys see that? So it's a little, sorry, I jumped that. Yeah, I kind of jumped the gun out. I see it. This one tells you a1 is 0. This one, combined with the fact that a1 is 0, tells you that a3 is 0. This one, combined with the fact that a3 is 0, tells you that a5 is 0. Right, so you're noticing that you're only getting the even ones. And then if you sit down with the even ones for a second, I think you'll be able to figure out a pattern on the even ones and maybe see something reasonable. I'll let you guys fiddle with that because I think I'm out of time. Uh, so remember my original equation was y prime plus 2xy is 0, right? So it's not a sign, but maybe a sign of something or something. Think maybe a chain rule would get you there. Fiddle with it a bit.